Hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Toasted Tale podcast. For those of you who listen to this show regularly, we have a mix of different subjects that we cover and delve deeply into. Sometimes they are deep investigations into issues surrounding the world. Other times, they're lighter and looking at the simple beauty of everyday life and the world around us. And other times, we like to have a bit of fun and do a bit of investigation into a bit of silliness. Now, in today's episode, I fear we are going to be picking option number three, but when I first read about this subject, I found it so interesting that I had to make an episode on it. So today we're looking at whether Finland exists. And to give you a bit of an understanding about Finland itself, it is indeed a Nordic country in Scandinavia. It has three direct neighbours with Sweden to the west, Norway to the north, and Russia to its east. Nowadays, 5.5 million individuals call Finland their home, with over 11% in 631,000 people living in its capital, Helsinki. Being a slight minnow in the Scandinavian region, Finland oftentimes was pushed around by its larger, more powerful neighbours. It was mostly owned by either Sweden or Russia during its history. But after the 1917 Russian Revolution, it declared independence from Russia. It was a fledgling state, and whilst trying to stay as neutral as possible, had to fight to maintain its independence. For example, they had to take on the juggernaut of the Soviet Union in the Winter War, and then the Continuation War, and then they also had to take on Nazi Germany in the Lapland War. Now, after years of fighting, they did lose certain parts of their territory, but significantly were able to maintain their independence. They were still a largely agrarian country after World War II, but they rapidly industrialised and developed into an advanced economy, which allowed them to, while basing all of this on the Nordic model, build an extensive welfare state and resulted in widespread prosperity and high per capita income for all its people. In more recent times, Finland is a top performer in numerous metrics of national performance, including education, economic competitiveness, civil liberties, quality of life, and human development. This is something that we will touch on later in the Finland Conspiracy. In 2015, Finland was ranked first in the world human capital, and the Press Freedom Index as the most stable country in the world during the years of 2011 and 2016 in the Fragile States Index, and second in the Global Gender Gap Report. It was also ranked first on the World Happiness Report in the years 2018 19, 20, and 21. All very impressive, I know. And so you may be asking yourself, why would some people want to put across the idea that the country of Finland doesn't exist? Now, whilst I do not in any way subscribe to this conspiracy theory, I do find it interesting how some people in the world can justify these types of thoughts and rationalise them so strongly, not only to believe them themselves, but also try to convert others to their way of thinking also. During my research about this, I also found it very interesting looking at the history and the geopolitical undercurrents that influence the conspiracy as a whole. Firstly, I want to point out that I am fully aware that the idea of a whole country that is on Google Maps and the atlases of the world not existing does seem ridiculous. But supporters of this conspiracy will argue that that is part of its genius. It's so out there 
that anyone trying to put forward this idea will be laughed out of the room, be called a fool, and forgotten. Let's, you know, for the fun of it, look at some of the reasons and the storyline that's put forward by believers in the Finland conspiracy as to why Finland may not exist. Now, the roots of this idea are laid in the complicated relationship between the nations that typically make up the West, Russia, and Japan. The belief is that Finland was first created sometime during the Cold War, and this was an understanding between Russia and the West. It coincided with a massive push in environmentalism, and the idea of preserving the planet Earth for our future was really taking off. This led to the close collaboration between Japan and the Soviet Union. And looking back, Japan and Soviet Russia had always had a shaky relationship. And what is argued in this conspiracy that most of their dealings are also very secretive. And what, you may be asking, is the main dealings in regard to Finland? Well, it's one of those most valuable of resources, fish. And wouldn't you believe it, the Japanese love their seaborne foods. This can be seen in their love for sushi, and also by the fact that Japanese people nowadays eat around three ounces of fish daily. And this is in comparison to a typical American diet, who maybe eat fish perhaps twice a week. So, the trade agreements between Russia and Japan often involved fishing rights in their seas. And what the Finland conspiracy wants to make you believe is that the land mass of Finland is more so actually just the ocean of Finland rather than ancient historic forests you have endless seas and rich veins of fish just waiting to be plucked out supporters of the finland conspiracy point to a number of interesting moments in the relationship of both countries that raises questions for example why at the height of world war ii were the battles between these two nations minimal, despite being on opposite sides? Why did Japan sign a peace treaty with Russia in 1941, just months before their allies Germany went to war with Russia? Why were relations between Japan and Russia always positive throughout the Cold War, despite the major geopolitical differences between the countries? plus their close geographical positions that would make you feel like uh, tension would easily be caused. Now I think that going into a deep dive of the interrelationships between the two countries is maybe a subject for another podcast episode, as I don't think going into it now would really help us understand the ins and outs of the conspiracy at hand. I did want to point out some of the major questions the conspiracy theorist may think of though, as I believe there is value in hearing where their thoughts are on this issue. Now the answer that the Finland conspiracy theorists have is about the shared asset that interests both parties being Finland. The Japanese would be able to fish in the region of ocean between Sweden and Russia without the worry for any environmental repercussions. After all, nobody's going to expect fishing regulations to be broken in a place where there should be a landmass. In return for this, Russia would get a percentage of the fish that they would be able to then distribute among their population. Now, if you believe what the creators of this conspiracy are saying, then you will also be buying into the real reason that the largest railway in the world was constructed for. 
the Trans-Siberian Railway, which connects the western side of Russia to its east, and was opened in 1904, according to the Finland Conspiracy, was built in preparation for the constant flow of fish being caught in the Finland Sea, being brought through Russia, distributing to its people, and then ending up being transported across the sea for its final destination, Japan. Another piece of killer evidence that the conspiracy theorists throw at you is the curious case of Nokia, one of the biggest Finnish companies, and has its largest exporter as the country of Japan. Now, this may seem believable, it's a technology company, and the Japanese people and nation love their gadgets and technology. But the Finnish uh, conspiracy would have you believe that not many Japanese people have Nokia products, and what is mainly in these Nokia boxes is fish. The supporters of this conspiracy also cover a few other major questions they often get bombarded with. Number one, what about the Finnish people, some of who may eventually listen to this podcast someday? Where are you in this web of lies? Well, apparently the people from Finland genuinely believe they are from a country called Finland, but in reality they are only from small towns on either the eastern part of Sweden western part of Russia, or the northern parts of Estonia. And regarding all other exports from Finland, the conspiracy takes the top three exports from the country, which are oil, tech, and software, and they explain it away thusly. Firstly, oil. This can be collected from offshore platform oil rigs. It's also pointed out that the same tricky technique of avoiding regulation can also be used with oil. There are no regulations to be followed if there is no country to be regulating. Environmentalism be damned. The country's tech exports are explained away in a very similar way to Nokia. And regarding software companies, the owners of this conspiracy will tell you that through a fancy use of IP address mapping and making it appear that computers are creating software within the Finnish sea, you can explain away all software exports. The city of Helsinki, which is probably the most popular location for tourists in the country, and honestly has, you know, is enormous and it has a wealth of history and is on the world stage according to this conspiracy is located in eastern Sweden. Finally, with a conspiracy of this size, you'd have to wonder why so many countries around the world would go along with it, and also why there haven't been any massive whistleblowers throughout the years. Well, the conspiracy theorist would say that the idea of Finland was a goodwill gesture between the West and the Soviet Union, a bargaining chip that could be used in the political minefield of the Cold War. Nowadays, as argued by the conspiracy theorist, Finland has become an idealistic placeholder for what all other countries can aspire to be. As we mentioned earlier, the nation rates unbelievably high in so many metrics that it often makes other countries look woefully underdeveloped. The creators of the Finland conspiracy would argue that no real country could consistently place first in education, healthcare, gender equality, literacy rates, national stability, etc, etc and that it has become a shining beacon on a hill. Maybe imaginary, but still an idealistic vision of what all other countries could become. According to the people creating this idea, there is no way countries could be that perfect. 
which in their mind is another reason why the conspiracy makes sense. But why not create the perfect country so others can aspire? And then they also say that other people have realised that Finland doesn't exist. But that the ridiculousness of the statement, I don't believe Finland exists, is so out there that most people, our friends, families, or even acquaintances, would be so hesitant to allow those sorts of weird ideas to fly that it's inbuilt in the human condition to reject such a peculiar sounding thought. Therefore those trying to speak out are suppressed and the secret lives on. What do you think about the Finland conspiracy? Personally, I am of the belief and in the camp of those who believe that Finland does exist, and the fact that this conspiracy even exists is quite comical. But I think it's interesting how humans are able to wrap their heads around the unwrappable and attach their beliefs and reputations to ideas so peculiar. I want to thank you though for listening to today's episode of the Toasted Tale podcast. It was interesting to finally have a bit of a deeper look into this conspiracy that I had heard about many years ago but really not paid it too much mind since. I hope you learned something, enjoyed yourself and had a good time around the fireside for today's episode. If you did enjoy the show and want to help support the Toasted Tale podcast further, then the best way is to follow and subscribe to the channel on whichever platform you get your podcasts from. You can also get in touch. My handle for Twitter and Facebook is at Podcast Tale. It's there where I post all new episodes and also where I post anything that I find interesting. At podcast tale for more. Thank you so much again for listening to today's episode. I wish you all the best in all you attempt. I will speak to you all again soon for another Toasted Tale by the Fireside.